and welcome to Just One More Watch. Yes, indeed, I dusted off the kazoo and I was a little bit rusty, to be honest, as you heard there. That can only mean one thing. It's another 10 round head to head watch boxing special. I haven't done this style of video in ages. Today, you could call it a Royal Rumble if you wanted to between the Caddis Oak and the Pagan Oak. If you like the AP Royal Oak look, but not the AP Royal Oak price tag, you are not alone. And there are no shortage now of affordable alternatives, and I have got two of the most affordable alternatives for you today. One by Caddison and one by Pagani Design. Now, on the surface of it, this one seems like a bit of a no-brainer because there is a considerable price difference between the two watches. The Pagani on sale at the moment is 109 US dollars. The Caddison also on sale at the moment is 75 US dollars. I will obviously leave links to both of those in the description of the video. You're more than welcome to fish around though, see if you can get an extra couple of bucks off. Now, $35 of difference, that wouldn't mean much if we were up at $1,000, but we're not, we're down at or around 100, so that's a fair old percentage between the two. Easy, buy the Caddison therefore. Well, is it that easy? I'm not so sure. Let's see if we can come to a conclusion over the course of 10 rounds. When I get to the 10 rounds and declare a winner though, I'm gonna bowl you a massive curveball. So stay tuned for that one. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. And there they are, Pagan Oak versus Caddis Oak today then. Both of them clearly getting their inspiration from Gerald Genta and the AP Royal Oak, but not entirely the same. Bracelets are slightly different, the dial layouts, the hands, the markings and so on, all slightly different from each other and from the AP Royal Oak and various other Genta designs. Key similarities though, we've got those kind of fake screws on that upper fixed bezel and we have integrated bracelets. I'm gonna do dimensions very, very briefly for each watch before we get into the head to head. So the Pagani is slightly smaller coming in at 40 millimeters bang on, 12.2 millimeters thick. Now, lug to lug is a bit tricky with these integrated bracelets. This one though, 46 as it leaves the case, as the bracelet leaves the case. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, this one weighs in at 155 grams. Now the Caddison is a little bigger at 42 millimeters in diameter. However, it's a little slimmer at 11.8. Lug to lug though puffs out at 48, but yeah, like I said, it's a bit of a moot point. And because it's a larger watch, it does weigh a few grams more, 167 grams sized up for my seven inch wrist. All right, so this is the format. Pagani versus Caddison over the course of 10 rounds. I'm sure you've seen this here or elsewhere before. 10 categories, but I'm gonna double weight two of them, movement and brand, the rest all single weighted out of 10. Not that generous, there's a couple of nines here today, but there are also threes and there fours. The Scottish judge is notoriously tight fisted, is he not? That'll give a total out of 120. I'm gonna then convert that into a percentage before bowling you that googly, that curveball at the end. Now, a few of these categories are here to highlight the similarities between the watches. The first of which is movement double weighted. Both of them score nine because they've both got the same movement, that being the Seiko N. NH35. I'm giving them a nine because I think the Seiko NH35 is just about the best movement you can expect in a watch at or around the $100 mark. Bit of a marvel these things that they can knock them out in such massive numbers and yet they remain so accurate, so consistent and so reliable. So nine out of 10. I've seen the occasional Miyota 9000 series at this price and there's an argument that a day date complication is worth more than a just a date. But hey, nine out of 10, double to 18, identical scores. Similarly, crystals. Both feature flat sapphire crystals with no anti-reflective undercoating. Again, that is just about as good as you'll get at this price, hence they both get an eight. Moving on to the third category then, brand. Brand name, brand desirability, brand reputation, also double weighted and they both score a six for slightly different reasons. Pagani, I think, has got quite a bit more brand recognition in the budget end of the market, and they've really mushroomed over the last few years, proliferating so many different models. But there is that kind of suggestion that they shouldn't be called design when they don't design their watches. And is Pagani trying to leverage off the back of an Italian supercar? So it gets a six. Caddison, I think, has got a decent reputation, and it's a decent sounding brand name, unlike some of the horror shows that I talked about in the video last week. 
not quite got the same hubbub behind it, the same enthusiasm around the brand like Pagani has, so yeah, it scores a six. So three rounds then, and the scores are still all level. It's almost like the judge set it up that way. Can't stay level forever though, let's move on to Dial and Hands, and here I'm giving the Pagani an eight, and the Carison only a six. For my money, the Pagani is the more handsome of the two watches. It's not identical to the AP, it's got that double train track around the outer edge there that the AP doesn't have. I just think it pulls the look off more convincingly than the Carison does. Applied double baton at 12, single batons everywhere else, and no baton at the three o'clock because that's where the date complication is. Applied Pagani design logo under the double baton with the brand name printed on and automatic printed above the baton at six. Japan movement either side of the baton at six. Handset very similar to the AP, very simple kind of pencil hands with a needle second hand. If I show you this one really, really close up under macro lens, there's a powerful sunburst effect from this silver dial and some really nice concentric circle work patterning all over those little squares it's got that kind of crossed hatch squared exactly like the AP has. I like the look, I think it looks good in sunlight, I think it looks good when it's not in sunlight. Just overall, I think it's a more handsome look than the Cadison. That's why it gets an eight. Don't get me wrong, the Cadison is not a bad looking watch. It's a very similar looking watch with those applied indexes, double baton at the 12 and a truncated baton there at the three o'clock. It's a little larger this one, so maybe it's got a bit more space for that extra half a baton. If you zoom in on this one, also some very nice work here. This is a $75 watch and look at the texture on the dial. Look at how they have beveled the edges of all of those little squares. Very nice, very neat effect overall. But I'm just not as convinced by the layout overall where they have placed the brand name, where they've placed the automatic and 100 meters. I just don't think it looks as good. The handset also not quite as authentic. They're bigger, broader paddle hands and that diamond tip second hand doesn't feature anywhere on the Royal Oak range. So the Cadison scores reasonably well. It gets a six, but it loses this category to the Pagani. So the Pagani edging ahead by two points thanks to a more attractive dial and handset. However, it loses one of those straight away because its loom is rubbish. That's not to say that the Cadison's loom is anything other than rubbish either. You know, I've said it time and time again, you don't get decent loom for under $100 and these two pretty much prove that again today. It looks like some kind of C3, it's got that green glow and initially at least they do okay, but when I crank up the speed, what goes first? The hands go first on both watches. Not ideal, not really what you want. The Canison takes the extra point here because its indices are clearly brighter than the Pagani's, but it still only scores a four because what's the point of bright indices when the hands have faded to nothing? Moving on then to category number six, fit and finish. Now here I'm specifically talking about the fit and finish of the watch head itself because there is a separate category for bracelet coming up shortly. And yeah, the Pagani edges this one with a seven, the Carison again, middle of the road six. I reckon the Pagani is actually quite well finished, or at least it is quite complicated in terms of the finish for the money that they're asking. Now the AP Royal Oak has an octagonal bezel. This one has a hexadecagonal bezel. It actually has 16 facets. It's a kind of octagonal bezel, but with extra edges off it. It's got that vertical brush on the upper surface. The screws are all nicely in line. High polish around the edges here, but the edge of that bezel is brushed. There's a high polish chamfer running the length of that upper case and the undercut as well, so it's gonna wear comfortably. It's a complex little crown. Overall, I think they've done a pretty nice job on the head of the watch. However, there are machining marks. You can see it's a little darker than it might be at that top section between those screws and a little rougher than it might be on some of the edges here, which is why it's not an eight. This one might even have got a nine if it had been slightly better machined. So it looks good from a distance, but when you look at it up close, yeah, it's only worth a seven, which is still one more than the Cadison gets. The Cadison has a 12-sided bezel, so again, just slightly differentiating it from the OP. I prefer the crown on the Cadison for sure. It's a hexagon here with the Cadison logo on the end. 
Bezel's not quite as nicely finished, it's all high polished. These are not as neatly done, there's not quite the same level of high polished undercutting and the brushing throughout is rougher than on the Pagani, hence it scores one less point than the Pagani. Moving on to bracelet. Now obviously, integrated bracelet watch, the bracelet is a fundamental part of the overall experience and here the Pagani edges ahead by a couple of points. It gets an eight for the bracelet, it's a decent bracelet. Carison, again, that middle of the road six. Yeah, this bracelet is far nicer than it has any right to be, given the watch is $109. All brushed upper surface, they could have high polished that chamfered edge to go with the high polished chamfer in the case, but yeah, I'm not complaining too much of the price. Butterfly clasp, they both are butterfly clasps. Now, it loses one point because there's a bit of gap there between the two ends of the butterfly clasp. I do like the way they've etched Pagani design there super smooth at the back and arrows to tell you which way the screw links go. It does lose one more point though because it doesn't quite integrate with the case as neatly as it could. Maybe that end link could have been a half a mil shorter on either side, but overall it looks good, it feels good, it's comfortable, eight out of 10. The Caddison both looks and feels a bit more lumpen by comparison, big kind of gaps you can see between these links when it's off wrist and when it's on wrist and you don't have any articulation from those first two. I'll put it on wrist shortly. It's still not bad on me. If you've got a smaller wrist than I have though, you may be better opting for the Pagani just because it's a slightly smaller watch with a slightly shorter lug to lug. Again, it has a butterfly clasp, which unlike the Pagani, clips in really neatly, but it's not quite as smooth from the back and there are no arrows telling you which directions to push or pull those pins out. Overall, it's not quite as neatly integrated with the case as the Pagani one is either, so it only scores a six. Now we're getting close to the end now, but still three categories to go, including water resistance. These are sports watches, and a sports watch, for me anyway, should have 100 meters of water resistance. And thankfully, both of these do have a claimed 100 meters of water resistance. However, the Canison has a screw down crown. Not only does it have a screw down crown, but it has a nice visible seal on that crown crown tube as well. You rarely see that on dive watches at this price, let alone this style of integrated bracelet sports watch. Nine out of 10 for the Caddison, pulling two points back off the Pagani. Moving on then to comfort and wear the penultimate category. I will show you some wrist shots of both of these watches inside and out. And here the Pagani takes two further points off the Caddison. It gets both of those points that it lost on the water resistance back with an excellent nine. Now I am aware these two watches are different sizes and I'm not saying this one wears better because it's a 40, but I have already said if you have small wrists, then this is the better choice. It's gonna wear, even if it were a 42, it's gonna wear better because there is more articulation from that first link and there is more articulation from that bracelet. And look at that bracelet. Not bad at all. It does look like a more expensive watch than $109. I'm not gonna talk about legibility today. Silver on silver, perhaps not the best choice for that, but there are a couple of other versions of this Pagani to choose from. Outside, it's the same thing. I think it looks good in natural light. You can see all of the light play from all of those links when I roll my wrist. Looking down the wrist again, it's got a more compact lug to lug than the Carison. Extra articulation from the bracelet extra finishes, everything's nice and comfortable, all high polish undercut on here. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very comfortable watch to wear this one. Now the Caddison is not bad on wrist. I've got a seven inch wrist, average size as I keep mentioning. It has a longer lug to lug, but because those first links drop down dramatically, it does conform to the wrist nicely. Doesn't look quite as spectacular when I roll it though, just because there aren't quite as many facets to that bracelet. It's the same thing outside. It looks good in natural light, these integrated bracelets that all stainless steel watches always do, but not quite as spectacular as the Pagani. Down the wrist again, this one is actually slimmer than the Pagani, but feels thicker on the wrist. Another reason why it gets a six, but the Pagani outscores it with an eight. All right, rounding out the head to head today, round 10 is price, although perhaps I mislabeled that, perhaps I should have labeled it value. I gave you the prices at the beginning in the intro, those being 109 and 75, give or take a couple of dollars. What do I think of the relative value of each of these, knowing now what we now know about the relative qualities, the bracelet, the standard of finishing, the loom, the water resistance, etc. Well, I think that the 
Nick Caddison takes this one with a very strong 8. Great set of specs, love that screw down crown and crown seal. Couple of rough edges here and there, but for 75 bucks, it's a very strong offering. Regardless, it gets an eight out of 10. The Pagani is more expensive, but I think it justifies some of that by being the prettier looking watch, more complex facets to the case, and far nicer bracelet. It gets a seven out of 10. Where does that leave us then? Drum roll, please. And I'll move this up a little bit here. The grand totals for each of the watches, 87, and 84 out of 120. That leaves the Pagani as the winner today, just with 72.5%, the Carison on 70. So pretty strong scores from both of these watches then. But there can only be one winner today, and it is the Pagani design. Hang on a minute, what happened to this curveball? Well, there is a curveball, and it's this. There is a Mecha Quartz version of the Pagani design available for the same price as the Cadison, unless you are utterly fixated on having a three-hand auto and completely opposed to the idea of a Mecha Quartz chrono, you should definitely be considering that one. So no losers today then, and a choice of winners. I think the Cadison is a pretty solid offering, 70% and $75 certainly suggest that. The Pagani though takes it out and I think you've got two solid options. One, if you've got over a hundred to spend, don't neglect that Mecha Quartz though, if your budget is tight. So there you have it. Well done for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this head-to-head -head versus format, why not check out the controversial Jeannot you know, Ocean Rover versus my Aura 65, or the classic video now about three years old, Mako 2, Orient Mako 2 versus the Seiko SKX. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.